Listen to the Tommy Schnermecker Show live weekdays 9 to noon on CJAD 800 and CJAD.com. Well, officially into the uh, new year, we've got a year of issues uh, to tackle, uh, changes to keep up with. Uh, unless you have a crystal ball, not easy to figure out what forces are going to be shaping this new year. But uh, I might just have the next best thing with me, Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal, a publication that looks at trends that will be shaping the future. And he joins me now. Good morning. Hey, Tommy. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too, as well, Gerald. So, Gerald, uh, tell me, what are some of the uh, big trends uh, to look for in 2015? Well, before we look uh, ahead, uh, I want to look back a little bit because we've been doing this for a lot of years. And one we missed last year was a big one. And that was we believe that the, um, the markets would have unraveled. And we believe that because we thought that they were, and it ties into the future trends, that uh, the Federal Reserve was going to have to raise interest rates. Because they have not raised interest rates in the state since 2006. So in the old days, people used to put money in the bank. They had a thing called savings accounts. Right. And you would get more than your, your uh, it would beat the interest, the, the inflation rate. And now, of course, you put money in the bank and you get nothing back. So these, so what they're doing is they're propping up the markets with these low interest rates. So you saw what happened in the beginning of December when the markets started to unravel, and then the Fed came out and said, be patient, we're not going to raise interest rates. They went back up. So that brings us to fast forward. So we missed it. We thought that they, when they raised interest rates, you're going to see the global economy slow down to very severe levels. So they're keeping interest rates low, not only here, but around the world. But this year, we're going to start seeing that change start to have negative effects. And you're seeing it right now in Europe. And you're seeing it with the, with the currency, the euro, because they're going to announce that they're going to have their version of quantitative easing. So that means you're going to, it's going to cost the Europeans a lot more to live. Uh, the the euro's down to about now a dollar nineteen against the dollar, and it ties into other trends that we're seeing because it's a global slowdown. And one of the top trends for 2015 are price wars. What's going on with oil prices? You know, at first people kept saying, you know, this is to punish Russia. It's it's not punishing Russia. <laughs> it's hurting everybody in the oil business. And look what's going on with the loony. How much has it lost? since oil prices started going down since June. Now it's about, what, 84 to a dollar. So this is oversupply. There's more oil, but not only oil than demand. There's more copper. There's more iron ore. A ton of reinforcement rod in China is cheaper than a ton of cabbage. (laughs) Copper prices are down. uh, China gobbles up 40% of the world's copper demand, and that economy is slowing down. So it's going to hit nations around the world, like Chile, big copper uh, exporters, and all natural resource exporters. So what we're looking at is the second trend called bankism. People should stop calling what we have now capitalism, (laughs) because the banks are running the show. I just went through so, and it's not only in the United States or 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 Europe. Look what's going on over in Japan with Abenomics. They just have a different word for quantitative easing. And now, what they? I want to ask you about this quantitative easing. Uh, what it means, basically, uh, what the United States did, and now Europe, you're saying, is doing the same thing, is they're just uh, printing uh, counterfeit money. It's not, not really counterfeit. They're allowed to do it. It's uh, legal. They just say uh, it's a computer entry. They're saying there's more money. They hand it out to everybody, and everybody keeps uh, spending it. And that's why the price of collectibles is going up to $50 million for an Andy Warhol painting. There's just so much money sloshing around in the system. Uh, You're 100% right, except for one thing. They're not handing it out to everybody. It's going to the banks. And here's the deal. You're a big bank. I got something for you, Tommy. You could borrow money from me for 0.25% and then charge customers anything you want for it. And matter of fact, you could buy back my treasuries and you'll even make money on that. 
And then why are the collectibles going up? Because when you look at the equity markets, again, with the cheap dough, who's doing the deals? Companies are borrowing money for virtually nothing and buying back their stock, so they're enriching their portfolios. And mergers and acquisition activity in 2014 was back to 2007 levels. So you're 100% correct, except that it's only going to, it's not even the 1%, by the way, it's 0.01%. Here's a number that should have everybody (laughs) saying, you better head for the hills because things are going to get ugly. 85 people have more money than 3.25 billion. 85 individuals. 85 individuals around the world have more money than 3.25 billion. And again, it all ties together. Why are oil prices down? Why are copper prices down? Look what happened during the Christmas retail season. 70% off before Christmas Day. In the old days, it was 50% off after Christmas, and only junk was left. There's not enough people with enough money to buy all of the product out there. A Pew Research Center study just last week came out in the United States. The gap between the rich and the poor right now is even at levels worse than during the Gilded Age. Now, you're saying about, you're talking about people buying stuff at Christmas and the discounts, but isn't part of the reason that so many things are still selling is because you don't really have to pay for anything. It's no money down, no money per month for until years and years later. That's a big part of it, and that's what's also happening with the auto industry. That's why auto sales are going up. They're doing the same thing with non-verification loans that the housing market uh, boom uh, transpired with. You you don't have any dough, don't have a job, got a lousy credit rating? Come on over, you can buy a car, I got one for you. And don't worry about the interest, we'll put it at zero for a couple of months. So it's the same scam over and over again. And when we're talking about Japan, they are doing the equivalent of the United States putting in when you when you compare their GDP to ours, three trillion dollars a year of phony dough, and it's not working. the The third quarter GDP in uh, Japan was down seven point two percent, and that's after the first round of Abenomics. So now they're doubling up on it, and they're also not only that. The pension funds are bought now. Now they're investing in global stock markets when they only used to buy bonds over in in uh, Japan. So the whole thing is one big Ponzi scheme, which brings us to the next one, and that's the grand manipulation. And by the way, that that piece in the Trends Journal is being written by Dr. Paul Craig Grobitz, who's former Treasury Sec- Assistant Treasury Secretary under Ronald Reagan. And here's the deal. They rig the LIBOR rates. Those are the interest rates. We know that. It's a fact. It's not speculation. They rig the Forex markets, $3.5 trillion a day worth of currency trades. They rig them. We know it. It's not made up. You just don't see any head roll because that's the way it is with bankism. The banks get a free ride. So the markets are being totally rigged. Now, what? Okay, why do the banks get this free ride? Is because they uh, contribute very highly to both your major parties in, in your country? No, because they're running the show. Who was the who was the guy that deregulated the um, the Glass-Steagall Act that was put in place during 1930s so the banks could not become the casinos, the gamble that they become? It was Robert Rubin, and what was he? He was the former head of Goldman Sachs, and who's the guy that gave us too big to fail? Why, that was Henry Paulson on the Bush. And where was he from? Goldman Sachs. Oh, by the way, who's the head of the ECB, uh, the president of the ECB, Mario Draghi? Wasn't he the managing director of the European division of Goldman Sachs? Oh, and how about your guy that used to be in Canada that's now over there in the U.K., uh, Mark Carney? He was with Goldman Sachs, too. It's bankism. They're running the show. It's not a revolving door. And look, and look at the, it's, it's, the banks are in control of the entire world government. All right, we're going to continue our discussion. More of your questions for Gerald Salente. Text your question or your comment to 514 800.
Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal, on the line with us right now. If you have any questions for him, text him to 514-800. Joe wants to know, do you believe metal prices are being manipulated? Do you foresee China and Russia buying gold and creating a short squeeze? Uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, his his website is paulcraigroberts.org. He believes that gold prices are being manipulated. There's more demand for gold now, physical demand, than ever. But the paper markets, the COMEX and the trading, it's very easy to short the markets with uh, naked shorts and drive down the prices. As we're speaking now, gold is uh, hitting back above uh, around the 1200 mark. Uh, China and Russia are buying gold, and they're going to continue to buy it. And I really and, and and I don't give financial advice, but I've been buying gold since 1978, and I believe in gold uh, because of all of this cheap money printing, and I believe at some point it's going to show itself in a devaluation of currencies. So you're not going to see inflation in the standard way where there's more demand than supply. It's going to be that the it's going to cost you more to buy things because your currency is going to devalue. And I yes, I believe that China and Russia will continue to be big purchases of gold and also they're easing restrictions again in India so that people could buy gold there again because they were trying to protect the rupee from devaluing so much because people were buying so much gold. This texter wants to know, uh, where can I find sources proving that 85 people have more money than $3 billion? Google it up. <laughs> it's right there. Okay. Uh, th- this uh, texter is saying, uh, what can the little guy do to protect his nest egg? Well, again, I don't give financial advice, but for me, you know, I, I only speaking for myself, most of my uh, my assets are in gold. And, of course, you know, I buy historic real estate, but that's different. So there's not a lot you can do. You know, it's very uh, it's very iffy out there because, again, in the old days, you could put money in the bank and in a savings account and get interest back on it, but you can't anymore. What do you think the impact will be of oil prices, and are they going to continue to drop in 2015? I believe they're going to continue to drop, and for other reasons as well. One of the trends we're writing about is dominant energy. They're no longer alternatives, and it's going to go beyond wind, solar, geothermal, and biofuel. Ben Davis is our science editor, one of the top people in the country. And you're looking now at a, a, a reinstitution of uh, 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 atomic energy, uh, nuclear power plants, but they're not using volatile uh, substances like uranium, they're going to thorium, and you're seeing a lot of breakthroughs with hydrogen. There, there are a number of breakthroughs, and ironically, it's happening at a time when oil prices are declining. So it's going to put more downward pressure on them. I mean, after all, at one time they used to be ice boxes, and now they're you know that 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 refrigerators were the alternative. And from Julius Caesar to Grover Cleveland, the world's leaders went to their inaugurations and coronations in horse and buggies. And now, of course, then then the automobile was the alternative. And so that's what we're going to start seeing with fossil fuels. They're going to they're going to go the way of the horse and buggy and ice in many ways, not completely. So yes, I believe oil prices are going to continue to get under pressure as the global economy continues to slow down. Uh, what about uh, Russia? Will Putin be a major influencer in 2015? You know, we we've been following the Ukrainian crisis. We we called the civil war before it began, and we we saw what was going on with the anti-Russian sentiments with the Sochi Olympics. And we're political atheists. We don't take a we don't take a stand. We just call things the way we see them. Whether you like it, don't like it, we don't care. You know, we we, we look at the issues. And when you look at the Ukrainian crisis, this was an American pushed agenda. Anyone, if you, the person that wrote in and want to know about the 85 people that own uh, uh, more than 3.25 billion, you could also Google up Victoria, YouTube, Victoria Newland, N U L A N D, Assistant Secretary of State, December 13th, 2013, at the Washington Press Club. And there she is. 
with a Chevron sign over one shoulder and an Exxon mobile sign over the other shoulder saying, she's just come back from Kiev, saying that Ukraine is European and the best path that they could take is the one set forth by the IMF. And then, of course, they could Google up her conversation with the United States Ambassador Jeffrey Pyatt and where they tapped into their phone conversation and how they're talking about the overthrow of the Yanukovych government and to put in, quote, Yats, Yatsenyuk. So going back to Putin, anybody that thinks that they're going to pressure Russia has virtually no understanding of history. I have a chart in front of me that a fan gave me of Napoleon's march to Russia at the Polish border. He started with 422,000 troops. By the time he got back to Poland, he had 10,000 troops. Hitler launched the largest military offensive against Russia in the world, and we saw what happened. So to me, and, and looking at the facts, it's the United States and NATO that are, that are poking the bear. And the example is that when Gorbachev and Reagan made the deal and the, and the Soviet Union began to unravel, the deal was this. NATO was not going to expand beyond where they already were, and in return, Russia was going to turn over East Germany back to Germany. And beginning with Bill Clinton, they started reneging on that deal, and this is more of the neocons' push toward globalization, as I see it. So they're provoking Putin, and I think Russia's the wrong country to, uh, to provoke. We're going to continue our discussion, our conversation with Gerald Salente. Text uh, your question to 514-800. This texture wants to know, Mr. Salente believes the U.S. dollar will crash, and will we see another crash like 1929? We'll ask those questions after this. The publisher of the Trends Journal, Gerald Salente, on the phone with us. Uh, this texter wants to know, who's pulling the strings in this gentleman's conspiracy-addled mind? He's pro-Putin to boot. Isn't it true that the people of Ukraine preferred Europe to Russia? I'm not pro anybody. And oh, by the way, to answer the other question, 85 richest now have as much money as poor as 3.5 billion. USA Today, November 7, 2014. Um, so it's it's not about pro anybody. It's about listening and learning the facts. And as I said, the facts are there for anybody to look at. And who's pulling the strings? It's, to, you know, it's part, as I see it, the military-industrial complex as well. It's what Eisenhower warned this country against. And that was a five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, and um, two-term Republican president. So I would hardly call him a conspiracy theorist. And what's happened is that the, the business of America is now war. You look at the budget that Obama just passed, and it's estimated over 70 cents of every dollar is going toward the military and the cyber industrial complex. And so to me, this is just more war. I mean, we're back in Iraq. We're bombing Syria. And look what's going on with Libya. That was a wonderful one. So no, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's right there in front of everybody's eyes. This texture saying, am I right to believe that Putin is the most powerful person in the world? And if so, will he allow oil to remain this cheap? It's not in his hands, and I don't think he's the most powerful person in the world. I don't think there is such a thing. It's Again, it's a, it's a supply and demand issue, Tommy. You look what's going on in China. They expect each year, for example, that their GDP uh, increase at least 7.5%. It's down to about 7% now, which is good by most standards, but it's not good enough for them because they have 1.2 billion people that they have to keep happy. And you look at, the, again, it's copper prices, it's iron ore, it's corn, it's one commodity after another. So, no, Putin's not in control of this. They have nothing. They, again, you look what's going on, and look what's going on with how it's hurting. 20%, it's estimated, of junk bonds in the United States are energy related from the fracking, hydro fracking boom. You know, so this is hurting people all over Venezuela, Angola. It's, it's commodity prices beyond oil. So, no, there's no one in control. Gerald Salente, always a pleasure. Gerald Salente is the publisher of the Trans Journal. News Talk Radio, CJAD 800, CJAD.com.